It's a combination of science, technology, and research. It's in our DNA. Decades of groundbreaking treatments, changing the way we approach the fight against cancer. And now, proton therapy, done the Johns Hopkins way. Our mission is really threefold. So it's important for us to, to provide the best clinical patient care, uh, but also research in terms of the best clinical trials, as well as education. So providing um, our residents and trainees with the best training uh, in a technology that will really uh, transform cancer care. It's here at the Johns Hopkins National Proton Center at Sibley Memorial Hospital. Imaging techniques so precise combined with proton therapy for certain cancers. It's a balance to improve life quality and patient care. Proton therapy is, is absolutely the next step in advancing um, radiation oncology and radiation therapy. And a collaboration with Children's National that will save kids' lives. We just got the, the best of uh, these two great organizations uh, working together to do what's right for children. We have made the kind of mark on medicine that is, is incumbent upon us. Do the right thing for patients, focus on seeing care through their eyes, and ultimately the rest of it, I think, takes care of itself. This is the Johns Hopkins National Proton Center. It can change a life. Good afternoon, and welcome and thank you for joining us on this wonderful day for Sibley Memorial Hospital as we celebrate the dedication of the Johns Hopkins National Proton Center. I'm Dr. Hassan Zia, and I have the privilege of serving as the interim president of Sibley Hospital. Today is exciting because it marks another significant milestone in achieving a vision that was set forth nearly a decade ago when Sibley Hospital joined the Johns Hopkins Health System. That vision was to bring world-class cancer care of Johns Hopkins Medicine to our community, the District of Columbia, and the National Capital Region. Over the last few years, our campus and our clinical programs have undergone an amazing transformation to support this vision. We've opened nearly 30,000 square feet of space dedicated to oncology care. Our infusion center, which opened in 2014, is on pace to see nearly 28,000 patients visits this year. We're continually adding more Johns Hopkins faculty across our cancer programs and opening new clinical trials for our patients. The opening of the Johns Hopkins National Proton Center brings together the world-class industry-leading technology of Hitachi and the world-class talent and expertise of Johns Hopkins Medicine all for the treatment of cancer on the Sibley campus. There are several key people and groups that have enabled us to realize this vision that I would like to recognize. We're joined today by members of our hospital board and our foundation board. I'd like to ask our trustees to stand for a moment and be recognized. Thank you all for your support along this journey. Mr. Ted Miller and Mr. Jeff Brown, chairs of our hospital board and our foundation board, respectively. Our, okay. our dedicated clinicians and staff, some of whom you'll hear from uh, during our program today, and most important, our patients and our families. Great teams can accomplish remarkable things together. It has taken tremendous teamwork and collaboration over several years between Sibley, Johns Hopkins Medicine, and Children's National Hospital, and that has made today possible. I would like to recognize and thank my colleagues at Johns Hopkins Medicine and at Children's National Hospital for your commitment to ensure the most advanced cancer care is now available on this campus for our patients. To that end, I would like to welcome Dr. Paul Rothman, Dean of the Medical Faculty and CEO of Johns Hopkins Medicine, Mr. Kevin Sowers, President of the Johns Hopkins Health System, 
and Dr. Kurt Newman, President and CEO of Children's National Hospital. You'll be hearing from each of them over the course of our program. Sibley's recent growth is also made possible through the support of our local leaders. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Turnage, for all of your support. I would also like to thank our colleagues at the DC Department of Health who helped to ensure we always put safety first. Dr. Laquander Nesbitt, Dr. Sharon Lewis, Veronica Longstretch, Dr. Greg Talley, Ted Fikes, and Jay DeVore. Thank you for your great partnership throughout this journey. We have a really great program today, so without further delay, I'd like to welcome Dr. Paul Rothman to the podium. Thank you, Ross, and good afternoon. It's a beautiful day, and it, I am so proud to be here and for the opening of the Johns Hopkins National Proton Center. So I threw away my prepared notes, which always scares everyone. So um, I want to begin by thanking um, the Sibley Board, both the Foundation and the Hospital Board, and we have several of our Johns Hopkins Medicine trustees here, because it is your vision that is leading to today. Um, the commitment that you had to seeing what could be special here in partnership between Johns Hopkins and Sibley uh, began 10 years ago, and this is, for me, the capstone of the initial phase of this interaction. So thank you for your support and help. So I th thought about today, what, what could I say? And, and I said, it's, you know, when you think about the progress of medicine over time, you think about how we've improved the lives of those we serve. And, that's also often an incremental change in where slow progress using research leads to new treatments or new medicines over time. And we see that progress occur. And it's been, it, during my lifetime, really amazing. Occasionally, you'll have jumps in technology which really change that slope of the curve and gives you an inflection point. And often that occurs because of great research breakthroughs and really new techniques and new devices that change the way you treat patients. One of those is occurring now with proton therapy, fundamentally giving us a new way to treat patients that decreases the toxicity of radiation therapy. So this center has been seven years in planning. And when we thought about how we could bring cancer care to the national capital region in a way that no one else could, we thought about Proton because it is something that was not often in here and we thought the patients of the NCR deserved. So we thought as we built the cancer center here at um, Sibley, that the Kimmel Cancer Center would come down but bring with it a new therapy that would really change the lives of the patients we treat here in the national capital region. And that is what we're opening up today here at this center. It's a, if you saw the picture, it's a big building, right? And if anyone's been at Rio Toro today, it is big and it is complex. It's got a lot of big things in it and big machines. And that's, that doesn't happen by just you know, me saying, let's build a proton center, and someone said, okay, so we'll build a proton center. It was seven years of hard work by a lot of people. Sibley Hospital leadership, Kimmel Cancer Center leadership, the boards, the finance team, this doesn't occur by just snapping your fingers. And so f what I'd like to do is really thank the teams of people who've dedicated the past seven years to bringing proton here to Sibley Hospital and to make it available to the people of Washington, D.C. So I want to thank all of you for your hard work, and it's my pleasure to actually introduce one of those people who's our Interim Director of Radiation Therapy, Akila Vaswanathan. Thank you, Akila. Thank you, Dean Rothman, and thank you all. It's truly an honor to represent the Department of Radiation Oncology here today as the interim director of the department and at this very, very special event. We come here to, today to celebrate the opening of this very, very special center. This center is bringing together so many, so many of you, and it represents a merger between Johns Hopkins, between Sibley Memorial, 
Children's National Medical Center, and all of you have worked so hard to build this pinnacle of cancer care here in Washington. The center will serve not only the communities in Washington and Baltimore, but we expect that it will serve communities from around the country and also internationally. Our Proton Center contributes to our core mission. That is, it contributes to patient care, the education of our trainees, and also to our research. We are one of only 32 proton centers nationwide, and the center merges the most precise radiation proton technology available with Johns Hopkins' unique multidisciplinary cancer care and expertise that makes the Kimmel Cancer Center so famous. We will develop innovative treatment plans and have already started to do that based on this very, very precise technology. We're using our very advanced dual energy CT scan, which allows us to calculate exactly where the proton's going to go and where it's going to stop. This allows us to spare as much normal healthy tissue as is feasible. We also have a very special MRI called a biomatrix MRI that allows us to watch the tumor as we're planning the treatment in a way that's not possible with other systems. This technology really is the next generation in proton therapy. It combines our advanced pencil beam scanning technology with full 360 degree rotating coverage and is incredibly fast. So it means less time on the table for the patients than they would get in any other proton center. In addition, all of our patients are able to register and participate in our clinical trials. We'll be combining laboratory and clinical research in this facility and work with our faculty together to address novel therapies and really to work ultimately to improve cancer care from the, through the continuum. All of this has been possible through a list of names that's far too long to mention in detail. I do, in the department, want to thank specifically some of the folks who've really contributed. Um, we thank, obviously, Hitachi for partnering with us. We thank Sibley and uh, all of the, the work that's been done here. We want to thank our administrative team, currently led by Kelly Gress, our uh, CON team, led by Ann Langley and Marissa McKeever, our physics team, led by John Wong and Heng Lee, along with Todd McNutt and Wolfram Laub, our nursing teams led by Jen Holt and Roberta Anderson, and our therapy team led by Annette Saranis, as well as many, many others. Our physicians have contributed so much of their site-specific expertise to getting things up and running. We currently, our proton director just started a few weeks ago, Christina Chen, who came from Washington University. She's partnering with Kurt DeVille, who's been here and has significant expertise, as well as Matt Ladra, our director of pediatrics, and so many others. We want to thank our colleagues at Children's National who've worked together with Dr. Ladra and others to build this dedicated pediatric team that means so much for children with cancer. It's a very, very unique feature of our Proton Center. It therefore gives me great pleasure to introduce our partner in all of our pediatric endeavors, Dr. Kurt Newman. Well, thank you, Akila. And, um, what a superstar, and it's just been an honor and pleasure to work with you to bring this amazing vision to fruition, so thank you for all of your leadership. Uh, it's just outstanding. And, you know, I've uh, been in Washington uh, a long time. Most of that at Children's National is a pediatric surgeon, and I took care of many children uh, with, with cancer. And uh, so I kind of knew a little bit about proton therapy and the way I knew about it uh, as a surgeon was uh, a young man who was on my son's soccer team who, uh, but he was playing hockey, had an injury on the uh, hockey rink, uh, was taken, it was a head injury, they got a, a CAT scan on him and a very smart radiologist saw that he ha didn't have anything uh, in terms of his brain but detected incidentally, a spinal cord tumor. Uh, it was at a point where it was asymptomatic, and he uh, came to Children's National for all of, all of his treatment. But at that time, uh, proton therapy was new, and the only place to get that for a child uh, would mean that the family would have to move up to Boston 
to the Mass General, Aquila's old home, uh, and have treatment and live there for, uh, for basically uh, almost two months to get this treatment, which was so specific, precise, and perfect for this type of uh, brain tumor or spinal cord tumor. And they did that. Uh, the young man, uh, he uh, recovered well. He had, to ha he had surgery after the, the, the treatment. Uh, did well, was able to return to playing soccer, went on to uh, college, uh, and now is in medical school. So when I think about that, and then to now and our, our vision, and just look back at the road, when I became CEO at Children's National eight years ago, one of the thir first things that I was presented with as a possible uh, partnership was with Johns Hopkins and Dr. Rothland, the dean, and Bob Sloan, who's here, and some of the other leaders, Ted DeWeese. And they uh, came together, and you know we hadn't really thought in this way before, but we thought, what's the best thing for children? How can we work together to provide this amazing technology that Johns Hopkins and Sibley were coming together around was there a way that Children's National could play a role for our, our children and even think more broadly about a partnership for all of the children with cancer in this region? Because when you think about it, there's two top 10 children's hospitals in this region. There's two top 10 pediatric cancer programs in this region. Wouldn't it be better to come together and create something new that no one had ever created before around children here on the Sibley campus. And it was that joint vision to do something great for, for children. And what I loved about the Johns Hopkins philosophy was, you know, we want to focus and dedicate a big part of this center to children. That's not commonly done. It's pretty unique, in fact. So that a big piece, one of the gantries, and if you haven't been in there, you'll figure out, you'll learn what gantries are. I'm, I'm still learning. But is dedicated just to children. And the anesthesiologists are just uh, uh, pediatric. And I see uh, Dr. Heitmiller here, who's the chief of pediatric anesthesia at, at Children's National and was at Hopkins before. So that's another example of this partnership uh, that we've created and the child life and everything that goes along with that. So this, this vision, which really on the Johns Hopkins Sibley axis was 10 years for Children's National, it's been less than that. But now we, we are about to embark on this just great collaboration partnership for the children with cancer, not only in Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, and not only in this region, but this is going to be a national and international resource. So to the Hitachi partners, uh, this is big. So I'm just so grateful because now when I think about that same young man I mentioned that had cancer and got treated but had to go to Boston, now that same family would be able to stay right here at home and get the treatment that they need. So I want to thank you uh, to all the partners, uh, to Kevin Sowers, to Hassan Zia, uh, to all of the people uh, 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 that have made this possible. On behalf of the children and families of this region, thank you very much. I'd like to next uh, introduce uh, the, the ch uh, chief of um, Oncology at Children's National. I should know his title, but you know, uh, titles are just one thing. What he is is a great doctor and researcher. His name is uh, uh, Jeff Dome, and I think it's uh, important in his background that he trained at Johns Hopkins and has been at Children's National now for, uh, Ted, stop, you, you can't have him back. Uh, uh, but Jeff Dome, Jeff. Thanks a lot, Kurt, and um, it, it's great to see 
uh, all the great colleagues in the audience, and uh, I'm thrilled to be here on this momentous occasion to share how wonderful it is to have a proton beam facility right here in the District of Columbia with a team dedicated to the care of children. As uh, Akila mentioned, proton therapy is, is a type of radiation therapy that's more precise than conventional radiation therapy. And, and the technology enables us to focus a beam on tumor tissue and spare surrounding normal tissue. And thinking about that from the standpoint of children, this is critically important because children are growing and developing. And the ability to spare normal tissue enables us to avoid long-term side effects. And, and our hope is that our children, our patients, live for many, many years after the administration of radiation therapy. When this program was first conceptualized over eight years ago, and I checked my email notes to confirm that, I, I had to go into the email archives, we, we at Children's National Hospital envisioned that pediatrics would be enmeshed in the program, not just an adjunct to a strong adult program. We envisioned that this center would be a beacon for clinical care and would move the field forward through cutting edge research. And today, I'm pleased to share that this, vis this vision is proceeding according to plan and exceeding expectations. In collaboration with our terrific partners at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Sibley Memorial Hospital, we have assembled a team of radiation oncologists, nurses, anesthesiologists, and child life specialists who are trained in pediatrics and dedicated to advancing radiation oncology care for children. The team has actually been working together for more than two years on the photon, the conventional radiation program. And now with the opening of this state-of-the-art facility, we have the world-class technology to complete the picture. In fact, today is an auspicious day because the first pediatric patient started proton beam radiation this morning. So I'd like to thank my colleagues at Johns Hopkins and, and Sibley and Hitachi for making this vision a reality. With that, I'd like to introduce Mr. Kauji Takachi, President and Chief Executive Officer of Hitachi America. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Koji Takaichi. Uh, you, you can call me Ken. Ken Takaichi, President CEO of Hitachi America Limited. Uh, first off, I thank the leadership at Silver Memorial Hospital and John, Johns Hopkins Medicines in providing me this opportunity to speak in this wonderful audience. And just said this uh, project was initiated eight years ago, right? Uh, but it was the year 2014 summer. Uh, when our team at Hitachi first met with uh, Johns Hopkins team, which included uh, Dr. DeWitt and also Dr. Wang from the uh, Radiation Oncology Department. It was a rigorous vendor selection process, which does include, included three other competitors. At this point in time, Hitachi had only four sites in Japan and one site in the United States for a total of five sites which were treating patients with Hitachi proton therapy. Fast forward five years, now Hitachi has 17 sites in Japan and five sites in the United States, including this center, uh, for total 22 sites which were, serving, which were, treat, uh, which were uh, treating patients. And we are extremely excited and proud that Sibley will be trading in our nation's capital. And also, I'm very grateful uh, we are celebrating together this amazing milestone in proton therapy history. As we have begun a patient treatment last Friday morning, I believe that our partnership, Sibley Memorial Hospital and Johns Hop Hopkins Medicines, had just started, 
has just begun. Our company's mission is to contribute to society through the development of superior and original product and technologies. Through Hitachi's proton beam therapy system, we are committed to realize Johns Hopkins' mission of improving the health of the community and the world by setting the standard act of excellence in medical education, research, and clinical care. I wish this center for the best. Again, thank you for choosing Hitachi as your partner. I'm very looking forward to making a difference in many patients' lives together with Hopkins and Chevrolet. Thank you for your attention and congratulations. Now I to introduce uh, Dr. Ted Dewis, Vice Dean for Clinical Affairs and President Clinical Practice Association, Johns Hopkins Medicine. Thank you. Thank you, Koji, very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Pleasure to see everyone here, particularly my colleagues from Hopkins. Uh, you're here. And please know, as you've heard already, there are an enormous number of people at Hopkins who put an enormous amount of time that substantively got us to today. And they're not here to be able to share that with us. So I just wanted to say thank you to them um, as well. Um, you know, this center was conceived it was planned and has been executed based on really one core principle. And that is the principle that has driven Johns Hopkins for the last 125 plus years. And that is, we are here to improve the human condition. We do that by improving human health. We do research that improves it because it's directly translated into clinical care, done in a compassionate fashion. And we use those two things to train the future leaders of medicine. And that's where we have come to today. But I would say it's particularly unique in that, and as you've already heard, we have two set of partners that we don't traditionally always have. One is the great partnership with uh, Kurt, with Jeff, um, with Jeannie uh, here, all of Children's National, because they uh, similarly hold those things to be true that that is why we exist here, and that we can together do far better than we might otherwise. So I really thank you for that partnership, uh, both of you. That team is here and dedicated to advancing the care of kids. Um, but also with Hitachi, and you've always, already heard from uh, Koji, but it's very important to realize that through that conception, that planning and the execution, we have the most contemporary proton therapy in the United States here today to manage these children, to manage the adults who are uh, requiring it. And so teams have been constructed around the ability to manage adults with the most complex tumors to be able to improve their lives and that of their families. So um, I would say, right, today is the day. Now is the time to open this center and finally be able to deliver on the promise of medicine that we have and that we hold ourselves to every day at Hopkins, at Sibley, at Children's, and through Hitachi. So with that, I want to say thank you. I want to say congratulations to um, Sibley on this great accomplishment and turn it right over to my friend and colleague, the president of the Johns Hopkins Health System and the executive vice president of Johns Hopkins Medicine, Mr. Kevin Sowers. Thank you very much, Ted. Um, you know, it's exciting to be here today to celebrate the opening of the Proton Therapy Center and uh, underscoring Johns Hopkins' commitment to world-class patient care across Johns Hopkins Medicine. The Proton Center also supports our goal of offering state-of-the-art, value-based medical care throughout the National Capital Region in line with our mission, which is to improve the health of the community and the world by setting the standard of excellence in medical education, research, and clinical care. The Proton Center encompasses a vision and allows us to invest in the community, ensuring that we continue to serve all patients in need of innovative treatment, be it through our own Sydney, Sydney uh, Kimmel Cancer Center or through our novel collaboration with Children's National, which allows us to enhance our pediatric care of children in the National Capital Region and beyond. 
I am also personally grateful to, for the opportunity to work alongside Mayor Muriel Bowser and her team who shares the values we also sought to promote at Hopkins, focused on enhancing wellness as we work towards her commitment to invest in a health system that will ensure access to care for all residents of Washington, D.C. I would also like to recognize Wayne Turnage, who is the Deputy Mayor for the, the District of Columbia and Human Services, and Dr. LaQuandra Nesbitt, Director of the District of Columbia, Columbia Department of Health, and Amha Selassie, Director of State Health Planning and the, the Development Agency and the District of Columbia uh, Department of Health for attending and for their leadership in supporting this project and moving forward. It is now my pleasure to turn the podium back over to Dr. Viswami. Thank you to President Sowers. Um, and now we have a very, very special moment. So although we're celebrating the beginning and the beginning of our new Proton Center and turning on the beam, we also are celebrating for some what has been a successful completion of their therapy in the past. And so uh, one of the symbols of completing therapy for a radiation patient is the ringing of the bell. So in order to do this, we have brought uh, Julia Lindsay. I'd like to introduce Julia, who will be coming up on stage to speak to us about her experiences as a patient and having had received proton therapy and what that meant. Hello. My name is Julia Lindsay, and I am a four-time cancer survivor. In April 2009, I was diagnosed with a type of brain cancer. I was eight years old. I had surgery to remove the cancer, and then my doctors recommended proton beam radiation as part of my treatment. The nearest center with proton beam radiation was in Boston, Massachusetts. So my mother and I flew to Boston with me in a wheelchair for the initial evaluation. Two weeks later, we drove 12 hours to Boston to start proton beam radiation at Mass General Hospital. I had to live there for six weeks. You can imagine how hard this was for me and my family. Physically and emotionally, I had to recover from brain surgery and adjust to the diagnosis of cancer. Add to that the hardship of leaving part of my family behind, I had to leave my dad, my brother, and my dogs at home for six really long weeks. You don't want to leave all the people that you love to get medical treatment. This is why I am so excited about this new proton center that Johns Hopkins has opened in collaboration with Children's National Hospital. Having the technological advances of proton radiation here in the DC area is awesome for so many reasons. This means that future cancer patients do not have to travel long distances to receive treatment. They can sleep in their own beds at night. They don't have to unwillingly leave members of their family due to their health requirements, but can be surrounded by family and friends at their time of need. This new center for proton beam radiation provides lasting hope for future patients and families who will get to ring the same bell after concluding their treatment. Now I would like to invite two great pediatric oncologists up onto the stage, Dr. Ladra and Dr. Dome. So as I mentioned, we often use the symbol of ringing the bell to mean the end of treatment. This is a time that brings joy. It's a momentous occasion in any patient's course to say that they finally finished their six plus week course of therapy. Today we're going to use the ringing of the bell to mean the beginning. It's the beginning of the opening of the center and all of the future that it holds and the potential that it holds for all of us. 
So I will ask Julia to please go ahead and symbolically ring the bell. Wonderful job. We now have tours that are beginning for those of you that are interested in seeing this wonderful facility that will start over there just under the uh, letter, the big B. So we welcome you to, uh, to begin the tours and uh, enjoy each other and we'll be available also for questions. Thank you.